Hey folks, Mal the Train Tutor back in the studio and back with another rock tutorial for you. Yes, we're continuing with our sort of realistic rock series what I'm working on whilst I'm working on the book so I can keep videos coming for you guys. Now, uh, we've covered dry brushing technique, yeah, and we've covered the wet wash technique. This is the third technique I want to show you, which is the stippling technique. But not only that, I also want to show you a couple of little tricks. One, to sort of break the grey and make it a little bit more realistic. And two, also, let's have a little play with putting some minerals in there as well. So we've got plenty of interesting things to cover. Before we jump into the technique guys, remember if you are subscribed, unless you ring that bell and get notifications, you've only actually got a 16% chance or a one in eight chance of actually seeing my videos in your feed. So ring that bell. And if you are gonna give this technique a go, remember there's a link down below to the Terraniacs group. It's 19,000 strong now, so jump in the group on Facebook and post your stuff on there, or post it on normal social media and tag me in it, at The Terrain Tutor on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. And finally, if you really like the vids, remember there's links to patrons and PayPal down below. It all helps keep the lights on, the cameras rolling, and me bringing these techniques for you. So, shall we jump into it? Come on. We're gonna be using this Woodland Scenics mold to cast up the rock face we're gonna be painting. First job is to level it off and for that I'm using a damp rag just to keep it relatively level. Next up it's time to mix our casting powder and for that I'm using Cristacal R. This is a casting powder used for making industrial molds. It's incredibly strong and it's mixed two parts powder to one part water. Once it's poured into the molds and, and slightly leveled off, I give the table a good bang to loosen out any air bubbles. Now you can use a vibration table and you can pre-soak the molds in wet water, which is water with dish detergent to stop the bubbles, but I just find this way quicker. After about 10 minutes, it's ready to demold and it's strong enough to come out as a single piece with no worries. Next job is to clean it up a little, removing any of the little flash bits from where it's overspilled the mold lines. And then finally, picking out any air bubbles I didn't manage to bang out of it. And there you have it, the perfect rock mold for us to crack on with painting. So come on, let's get cracked on. So we've got a rock face here, and before we start our stippling technique, we need to base coat it. Okay, because a good solid base coat is a good way to start. But I wanna show you a little trick yeah, just before we do. Now what I've got here is I've got some uh, Wix's flint, uh, dark flint. Uh, dark, it's basically a dark gray. And then I've got some yellow. Uh, this is processed yellow from Galleria, Windsor & Newton. I'm gonna drop that there. Come on, out you come. Ew, look at that, that's really yellow. Now, using yellow with gray is called breaking the gray. And it's a way of sort of taking it away from its monotone sort of style. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a little bit, and I mean, it's just that much, okay? And I'm gonna put it in this, and I'm just gonna mix it in. Is that enough? Uh, I think I'm gonna go for just a little bit more. I don't want too much of this. Yeah, let's give that a go. There we are. And what it'll do is it'll slowly change the tone just a little, okay? Now it may not seem much there, but that will take it away. See how the gray there is sort of really dark and strong and whereas this one's got sort of almost a, almost a little bit of a, a green touch to it now it's been mixed in. Yeah, but basically we've broken the gray there, okay? And as we lighten this up, yeah, the, the effects will become far more apparent. Okay, but what we need to do now is get it base coated up. So I've got a one inch flat. I'm gonna wet it a little, get a bit of water on there. And all I'm gonna do is get this base coated. Now, all I need to do is get it in the majority of the recesses. Okay, I can come along afterwards after with a second coat and just basically sort of get these patches and go over again. But right now I want a nice thin coat that I can push into all those recesses because with a stippling technique, it's great at highlighting things up, but it does struggle creating shade. And so this is a good way 
yeah of getting the shading first and then we can build the stippling up on it afterwards and so i'm gonna have some fun i'm gonna slap some of this on and get a little bit wet and messy like i do see if i can find all the little bits i keep missing yeah and then i'm gonna bring this back yeah once it's fully done So the base coat is all dry now. And as you can see, there's a couple of little bits that are still showing through, but I'm gonna be putting paint on those anyway, so I'm not concerned. The important thing is I've got nice strong shade everywhere where I need it in these recesses, because that's where I'm gonna struggle. I might even come in with a little cheeky wash at the end and sort of just reinforce them, but we'll see how we go anyway. So stippling time. Okay, now we've got our base gray here. I've mixed up a little bit more. So I've thrown a little yellow into it again, just to take it off that sort of monotone dark gray. Okay, and I want to lighten it up. So for that, we've got uh, Wilkinson's Urban Gray. Not used this before, so it's fresh out the tub. Yeah, give it a bit of a stir. So we, because it's been sitting in the tub for a while. We'll get that and we'll drop that there. Yeah, and then what we're going to do is we're going to start lightening this up a bit. Now, I love mixing on the fly. Sometimes I use uniform colours that are pre-mixed as stages. But to be truthful, yeah, mixing on the fly often gives much better results and much, especially when you're doing natural things, if you know what I mean. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Scrape that bit of paint off there. Ed next door singing away. <laughs> Right, let's crack on. So, the actual stippling. Now, for the stippling itself, what I'm using is I'm using this. Now, this is sea sponge, and it's been ripped up into numerous little different bits. But what I'm after is these sort of bitty bits, if you want, because that's how we're going to apply our paint. Now, if you haven't got sea sponge, you can grab a normal sort of car sponge and rip it up. In fact, let me show you this starting off. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip that into there because this is a stippling technique, I'm going to spread that about a bit and thin it down. So I've only got about that much on. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to come along. I'm just going to start stippling it up. Yeah. And the point of the stippling is the stippling is going to give us a variation to it. So we're coming along. You'll see how when I was talking about the recesses, how it struggles to get into them. Yeah, you can sort of point it and angle it, but it's still going to struggle. Yeah, so let's just, we need to really lighten this up a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's looking nice. And then, yeah, what I've got is, I've got a bit of warm beige from Wilco's. Yeah, which is a nice cream color. Yeah, and what I'm going to do is, we're going to do the same with this. And we're going to throw this in at the other side trying to avoid that yellow. Yeah, so let's throw that in there. Come on, get off your brush. Stir it in. Come on, lighten it up. There we go, here it comes. Don't wanna get it too close to that yellow or it's gonna contaminate it. Yeah, but this will give you a slightly warmer color than that one if you notice on the palette. There we are. Clean that off. And then what I'm going to do is get a bit of my sea sponge. And I'll use the sea sponge on this one. Yeah, so get it on it. Dab it off. Come on in. And start breaking it up. Now you'll notice I've got little bits of the actual cream in there. Yeah, which is absolutely fine. Immediately the rock colour is changing. Yeah, it's going off that sort of bluey tone it's got. And it's getting a little bit more natural. Yeah, so let's put a bit more on there. So I'm mixing them both now. And we're just going to keep doing this. Yeah, whilst we get all those shadows in. And then very quickly, oh, dropping it. What you like, messy fingers. Yeah, I'm just going to get some into that recess there and sort of break that shade down into there as well. Break some of that shade down because it's a bit strong and across the top because I always forget the top when I'm doing these tutorials. So we've put two in there now, we've already lined up, you can start seeing it coming together, but it's still wet. So what we need to do now is, we just need to leave it to dry.
So there's our first layer of a proper stippling done. Yeah, a two-tone stippling. You can see little bits of the cream embedded in there where it wasn't fully mixed. All that does is help make it look more realistic. Now, uh, while I was waiting for this dry, I've just mixed this up. This has been made lighter with a little bit more of our urban gray, and this has been made lighter with a little bit more of our warm beige. So once again, uh, I've got two options to pick from. Yeah, uh, so I'm gonna go with this one first. Yeah, and the trick with stippling, okay, is with each layer, yeah, do a little less stipple. So you reveal what's underneath rather than sort of using stippling as a way of getting a broad coat off. So on this one, you can see sort of just so you can start to see our two tones. With this, we're going to break it up a lot more. Now, remember, when you do put things on wet, yeah, they are brighter because the moisture in them reflects more light, so they appear lighter. They'll dry a lot dabber, a lot dabber, a lot uh, drabber, okay? A little bit darker. So don't concern yourself if when you do this, you go, oh my God, look at it. It's gone horribly wrong. No, it hasn't. It's perfectly fine. Yeah, what's actually happened is you're doing it perfectly right. It's just that wet paint is brighter. Yeah, so you've got to trust your instincts with this one. Yeah, and try not to go OTT on it and just... Believe in, believe in yourself. You can do it. I know you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Because I'm useless at this sort of stuff. <laughs> right, now we get this one. And which one did we do first? We did that one first, didn't we? Right, let's crack on with this one. Now with this one, you'll notice I've mixed it up, yeah? And what I've done is I haven't completely mixed it. So you can see, actually you can see next to untouched pure urban gray, our mixtures and even a little bit of the old black in there. Well, the dark gray. Yeah, uh, what you call it? Our dark flint from, what you call it? Uh, where was it? Uh, Wix is that one. Right. So, dab this off. Yeah, and then come back in. And we're going to layer this much same. Same sort of concentration. Yeah, but this is going to give us some more contrast. Now, it is looking a little bit mono... That's a bit heavy, actually. Let's dab that down a bit. I think because I'm layering on top of the other one, to be perfectly honest. And I even, I'm, I'm sort of feeling that effect of, oh, this is a bit excessive, but it isn't. I've got to learn to trust myself as well. Trust yourself, Mel. You can do it. You can do it. Better be able to do it. You're writing a book on it, mate. <laughs> right, let's crack on. Okay. I don't want to go too much over here. Yeah, but as you can see. Yeah. Now it's starting to look like a rock. Now I'm gonna leave this to dry and then I've got a couple of little other things just to add on. But with regards to creating the rock texture, this is pretty much it. Yeah, that's that's the technique. Mix it, stick your sponge in a little bit, take the excess off and make sure with every successive layer, in fact, let's just do a little bit extreme highlighting. Yeah, so with every excessive layer, just make sure that you're not putting too much on so yeah i'm just going to use these just to help break it up a little and you see how with this even light color i'm going even less on it yeah just getting those across and i think yeah but that is where i want to leave that now okay i want to let it dry and then we're going to come back and i'm going to show you a couple of little final things just to make it beautiful right Let's leave it dry, eh? So that's all dried now. And as you can see, it looks beautiful. It's broken up, okay? You can see the highlights. And because it's a stippling action, you don't get that effect with dry brushing where you get the highlights on the top or with washing because the, the wash falls into the recesses. You actually get this broken up sort of highlighting across the piece. Okay, and that really works because rocks like that. Okay, now on top of that, you should also see that there's a difference between our colors. It's only subtle, but that's what helped reinforces the realism. But that being said, I still feel it's a little gray. So I've got a couple of things I want to do. I want to put some green on it. Okay, and not so much, what you call it, sort of mold. I want to put minerals on it. 
So here's another little trick for you. I gave you the little yellow one for breaking the gray. Here's your second little extra tip. Now I've got some sap green here, but I wanna make it clear, yeah, that not all sap green is created the same. So when you pick your sap green, yeah, you're looking for a darker one. Yeah, some sap greens can be quite bright. Okay, now, yeah, I've got some on the palette and then what I've got is I've got a kiddies dabber or a makeup brush. You can get them from what you call it. I don't, this isn't a makeup brush. They sell them as makeup brushes, but you can get packs of these from like hardware stores and they're for doing your edges. Okay, but all I've done is I've ripped the end up a bit and, and frayed it. I've got my green there and I'm going to come along and I'm just going to, yeah. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of gray on it. Yeah. All this is going to do is desaturate it a little. Yeah. And just make it a little bit more realistic for me. I'm running out of plate to dab it. There we go. And then very carefully, yeah, we're going to put some mineral lines on this. Now, remember, as it goes on, it will be lighter than you expect it to be. Yeah, we know that it will darken down. Go gentle. Yeah, you're only trying to break the surface up. Okay. Just a little. Okay. Nah, I'm saying it okay a lot. How's that looking? There's a few on there, isn't there? A couple more there. Let's do some. Let's do a cluster there. Like it's a concentration and some a cluster there. Now, obviously it's a single color and it's not sort of blended in. It's slapped on top. Yeah, so what we need to do is just leave that to dry. Okay, but as you can see, it has broken it up. We're gonna blend it in with a little bit of a wash afterwards, okay? But before we can do that, this has gotta dry fully. So, there you go, guys. That's what it's looking like right now. And we'll come back once it's dry. So our green's dried now and it's darkened down and it's broken it up lovely. It's a bit monotone on the green because it is just one color. And there's a couple of spots here, yeah, where yeah, I've dabbed a little bit too hard, but don't worry. Yeah, we can deal with that in this stage. Now, as I said, I want a little cheeky wash. I want to bring a little bit more, a little bit more warmth to the piece to be truthful. And for this, we're going to use the wet wash technique. Now, remember, we have covered a video on this. Yeah, uh, it was the previous video. I'll throw a link up. Yeah, but all I'm doing is I'm just going to apply water across all of it. Yeah, the idea of a wet wash is you introduce the, the paint pigment into a wet surface so you can just move it around. Yeah, so what we're going to do is that's nice and wet. Make sure I get the top as well because I always forget the top. Yeah. That's actually diluting that down, actually. I might, like, there. <laughs> I'm being a bit cheeky. It hadn't fully set. And so I'm going to use the wet wash just to soften these, actually. Ah, Mel's being a little bit cheeky. Ah. Oh, yeah, get those. I shouldn't do this. This isn't what the tutorial is about. But, yeah, there's those as well. Right, let's get some <laughs> let's get some browns in here. Right, for my browns, I've got a burnt umber and a burnt sienna. Both of these are warm browns, yeah, so they'll work well together. Yeah, I'm gonna use that one, yeah, and I'm gonna drop this into recesses. Yeah, now if you've watched the, the, the wet wash video, you know how I'm gonna do this sort of stuff. I'm gonna spread it around a bit, manipulate it, get a little bit more water. Flush it out a bit, not that much. Yeah, spread it around. Oh, suck that out. Yeah, use it to break up the surface a little. Yeah, and also use it to break up these greens a little as well. Yeah, a little bit more. Let's throw. Oh, I've already got some more there. I need to sort of spread that before we get too far. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more there, I think. Uh, and let's get some in here in these cracks. Yeah, you've got to get some in your crack, haven't you? Especially when it's nice and wet. Just fiddling around in there. Beautiful results. Makes everyone happy. Right. So, well, that's a bit strong, so I'm going to... Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting a bit carried away here. Calm down, Bosicle. Right, let's get some burnt sienna on there. 
Yeah, because this is a really nice red. Well, a brown should have... Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. Right, let's throw some in there. And let's throw some around here. Yeah. Right, bit of water. Let's start blending. And dab these in. I'm basically trying to carry the wash across from different points. Yeah, so it isn't too concentrated. And there's a mix of the colours across the piece, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Being conscious that I don't want the pigment to dry on the piece, so I need to spread it out. That's That bit sort of missed all colouring all the way through. How do you do that? All right, get a bit over here as well. Just a little bit. I think, yeah, I'll be happy once I've got... Oh, that's a bit strong, so... Anyway, we can move that, yeah. I do believe. Almost. Yeah. I think we'll get a bit there. You can, and I always forget that edge, but I think we'll smooth that a little. I think that has turned out bloody beautiful. I'm quite happy with that. Tell you what, let's leave it dry, yeah? And then we'll come back to it once it is, and we can wrap this up. So guys, there we have it. It's all dry now, and it looks beautiful. Okay, so let's let's break this down. First off, we went in with that dark gray, yeah? And we broke the gray with a little bit of yellow to make it a little bit more natural. We then stippled it up using two sort of highlights, one with a sort of uh, light gray highlight. And then we threw the cream in on the other one just to break it up and to give us our different tones. Once we stippled it up, we came in with a little bit of green, spread that around as sort of mineral deposits. And I'm glad I softened them out because it gives that impression of very fine mineral deposits in various areas, but certain concentrations on it as well which works well. And then finally, our two complementary browns, our Burnt Umber and our Burnt Sienna, both really warm browns. And you can see the, the sort of hints of those of where they've gone in. Apply patchy, yeah, to a, it's about generating a contrast, not staining the entire piece. So it's important you keep them separate and you move them about and you have areas which don't have them, if you know what I mean. But it only took literally, what? 15, 30 seconds, maybe a little longer because I was talking, but it's a really quick technique. And the results are absolutely beautiful. So guys, that is the stippling technique for creating rock surfaces. Hope you like it. Uh, let's wrap this up. So that's it for this technique, guys. Remember, if you're after more rock techniques, you'll find them in the Hills, Rocks and Cliffs playlists on the screen right now. And if you really like the channel, then you can also subscribe or support it on Patreon for extra benefits. And in the meantime, guys, let me know in the comments what rocks you'd like me to cover in future videos, and I'll get cracked on with those, and I'll see you soon. All the best, yeah? Terra.